the settlements. The Oslo Accords were negotiated while there was settlement building going on. The Madrid Accords were negotiated while there was settlement building going on. The peace deal with Sadat was negotiated while there was settlement building going on. The peace treaty with King Hussein was negotiated while there was settlement building going on. Barack Obama decided that he needed Israel to show the Palestinians something in order to get them to come to the table. He, we would disagree obviously, but he invented an issue that's a non-issue. It's an issue, but it's not a pre, it's not, it does not foreclose the possibility of having peace discussions because even Arafat did it. The, the settlement issue was an invented issue to try to get Israelis to the table and even after the freeze, Abbas made it clear he wanted proximity talks, not direct talks. The settlement issue should be stopped, not the settlement building in outlying areas should be stopped because it's a waste of Israeli money, because it's a finger in the eye of the yes. Palestinians, because it's just more work for Israeli bulldozers to do later for a whole array of reasons. Settlement building, except for the major blocks, which I'll come back to in a second, ought to be stopped because it's stupid, but not because it's an, object, it, it's, it's an obstacle on the way to peace. Now, I want to say something about Ariel and Gush Etzion and Gush Amunim, uh, uh, Maale Adumim, Gush Amunim, there's a Freudian slip, Maale Adumim, etc. Gush Etzion basically, basically is on the green line. Maale Adumim, you're right, is further out, and it's problematic on the map. But let's understand something. You cannot start war after war and lose war after war, and then simply say, and now we go back to where we started before 1967. The world, now somebody's gonna say, give me another example of a country that conquered territory and refused to return it. There's not a lot of examples, you're right. But there's 40,000, 50,000 people living in Mal al Dumin, a mostly secular and very light, light, you know, light, orthodox light, community. It's not radicalized. Why do people move to Mile al Dumin? Because they were given cheap housing. It's pretty out there. It's not crowded. It's clean. I wish you had said that if you were prime minister, you'd clean up Jerusalem. My God, that's so much more important to me. I'm just kidding. But, in I, but you're not going to move 40,000, 50,000 people out of Mile al Dumin. Now you're right. It complicates the map. That's the way it goes. Because we begged the Jordanians not to get into the fight in 67. We begged them. They got into the fight after Egypt was already destroyed and Syria was already losing. And stupidly, they got into the fight. Now we've put 40,000 people there. We're not going to evacuate that. Yes, it's going to make the map more complicated. It'll need highways. It'll need tunnels. It'll need bridges. It'll need something. Just the way it goes. Ariel is pretty darn close to the Green Line, and the reason that it extends farther out is because the whole West Bank, therefore, is there, is very, very, very narrow. And on real, I forget how many, pe how many people there are, but it's tens of thousands of people already with a university and with a cultural center, et cetera, et cetera. I just think it's not going back. So I would personally stop building in outlying areas where it is clearly a waste of money, where it is a provocation of the Palestinians, and where it creates horrific PR for the Jewish state. But I would also make it clear that a family that lives in Maale al Dumim whose daughter just got married and who wants to add a room onto the back of their house so she and her husband can live there, have every right to do that. And I would also make it clear, much better than Israel has done so far, that the minute you're the president of the United States and you apply the same freeze policy to the backyard of somebody in Malal Dumim, who's right wing next door, who the, right, the neighbor on the right is a Jew, the neighbor on the left is a Jew, the neighbor behind is a Jew. The neighbor across the street is a Jew. Where the whole city is Jews. And adding a little bedroom is not a provocation of anybody, to anybody. I would make it much more clear that the minute that you apply the same policy to adding on a bedroom in Maale Adumim as you do to one of those wacko outposts with two 17-year-olds and an M16 and an extension cord and a light bulb, then you either don't know anything about the Israeli map, in which case you really need to get to Israel quick and not just the Cairo, or you actually have it in for Israel. 
And either one of those two is an unacceptable place to be.